Good morning, nerds, and welcome back to the Mile High City. We're here at Supercomputing 2023. My name's Savannah Peterson, joined by my co-host, John Furrier. John, day two, lots of action, lots of people milling around. How yeah, are you feeling? I've been mean, feeling great, and the conversations about hardware, speeds and feeds, which we love because the silicon and the cloud bringing things together. More servers, more cores, more networking. I mean, it's a perfect storm of innovation here. It's going to be awesome, and data is, driving AI and that's all this is kind of collisioning together is great. It is great and I'm particularly excited for our next conversation about sustainable business in HPC and AI. Hot topic here at the show, pretty much covering all the bases. Please welcome Sirban and G. Thank you both so much for being here. Are you having a good show? It sounds like you're both busy. Oh, straight off. <laughs> Plenty of meetings, a lot of customers discussion, a lot of partners, and uh, obviously we are looking to develop further what, uh, what the business is for the HPC and AI. Which is the conversation top yes. of mind <laughs> for everyone here. I suspect most of our audience is familiar with the Dell. However, Sirban, why don't you give us a little bit of background on At North? So at North is a pan-Nordic uh, service provider. We're building data centers for HPC and AI only uh, from, from the ground up. Uh, we built HPC as a service and AI as a service. So we are really uh, partners in crime for really <laughs> developing this business and uh, supporting this business, but in a very sustainable way. Coming from the Nordics, I'm not surprised to hear you say that. You have multiple data centers across the Nordics, G, correct? You're just about to open your ninth in Copenhagen, is that correct? That's right. That is exciting, congratulations on that. Thank tell you very me, much. Tell me a little bit more about the partnership. You mentioned that you've been working together, Sabran, for five for plus years. almost five years, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, it, so it, you're not hype curve chasers. No, no. You've been <laughs> planning for this moment. We yes. plan for a, quite a long time, this type of thinking. Um, th the way how it started was like, we were looking for a partner able to provide a sustainable um, and a clear, understandable energy cost and um, able to provide a, a solution which is related to a, an area which is stable as well, not only from an economic perspective, but also from a political perspective. Into this world today, well, um, I, I think this is where it was a very important way to look into this one. And um, when we start the business, we were looking to um, how we can merge um, a, a Dell culture which is around technology and people and, and, and processes and, uh, and partnerships together with what the customers are looking for. And Atnot was exactly in the middle of, uh, of that, of that uh, turning point. Guy, talk about the, the um, formula for success because it's very difficult to have the sustainability checkbox legitimately and have technology Extremely innovation, hard. technology innovation, and the workload scalability and density that's required in the high performance data centers. What's the secret sauce? What's the formula? How do you guys pull it off? So first of all, we, as we focus on HPC and AI, we're focusing on what other workloads our customers are running. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's what the, why they do this. And then we see, really see how, how, what do we need to make this better, to make this more performant, to make this more uh, agile. And we, we looked at what is needed underneath, what is the best configuration of the hardware, what is the best network, the best uh, storage, the best, uh, but we, we have looked at, at scale, because we look at customers at scale. Uh, yesterday we were in a presentation where the Boeing uh, was, uh, was presented, how they do development of planes now and for the future. So this is really at scale, so no, no doubt. We have done this together for clients that we can mention, that we can, uh, that we can really refer to. It's a bank, BMP Paribas, we looked at what they, what they are running, they do all their uh, risk calculations, which are really heavy. They moved them away from imagine. France, from, from, uh, from uh, UK, from Central Europe, and we built that together for them in several data centers in Nordic, in Iceland, in Sweden, and so on. We built that for them in a redundant way, and they are now enjoying this, and this is now their sustainability story they show on their website, they show in their annual report how they achieve a sustainability. And Guy, it is super important to mention here that it was not a one-side only work. It was, 
it was all the parties, the, um, uh, the, the, the customer which was looking to organize this one, us as a vendor, he as a partner to assemble all these discussions and to build a solution. And by the way, one of the cities in, in uh, Copenhagen is, is using um, the, the hot water in order to uh, produce uh, heat for the for the people into into the city, so it's a kind of a oh, circular renewal. Awesome. Awesome. You get the renewability exactly. Yeah. So exactly. What's the design factor? Because I can only imagine the design has to be innovative. Yes. And you got to use the Dell gear. You got to get the stuff. You got to get the hardware. What's the design mission, North? What's the North Star yeah. on the design philosophy? Yeah, happy to really go into that. Not too long, but uh, to, <laughs> to the point. So, for uh, as learn. we said, it it, we, we cover the whole stack from the application. We look what the application needs, and what are the, what are the data center needs, the network needs, the compute needs, the storage needs, and so on. And what we did is uh, because our clients they want sustainability. Now, much more than before. A couple of years ago, sustainability was on their list, but not, not, the top at, not at the top, not, not necessarily at the top three even. It was mentioned, but now it is absolutely at the top three. So what we did, we did the design, so we see, of course, the computers, the data centers, so the data centers only new, use uh, the most efficient way of energy, and we have an abundance of renewable energy in the Nordics, so that's tick in the box. Then with the data, then data center design is the most efficient we build it for HPC and AI in the, in the most efficient way, tick in the box. Then of course we look how, how the whole clusters come together and we now move more and more into uh, direct liquid cooling. So we actually directly capture the heat, get that to the, to the heat exchangers and then we are selling that off to the heat nets and we are, we are uh, heating Ten thousands of houses and apartments with that heat. So that's really the circular economy. So that's why these clients like that so much. They come with their their critical mass HPC and AI workloads. They love to come with it, and we love to do that more. It's, and actually, I can say it's not only in Europe. We have quite some U.S. clients who bring that to us as well. So they have fun that. I got to just emphasize a really fascinating point. I think sometimes when we think about sustainability, we think about net zero, or we think about carbon emissions, or we think about literal energy. But it's wild to think that the machines powering our AI future, and perhaps AI that could control the thermostat in my house, could also be the liquid cooling responsible for then heating the system as a result. Exactly, and think about, you know, when you're, look, when you're looking to the next generation of technology, right? The CPUs, the GPUs of the tomorrow world, they are going to consume more and more energy. In, exponentially more. Exponentially, Yeah, we're absolutely. talking orders of magnitude here. This so, and, and we had a, um, earlier today a meeting with a customer and the discussion was not when they are, go, if they are going to liquid cool, is when you are going to liquid cool. Right. And, and that is a discussion which you need to start planning it now in order to make the uh, understanding about what you're going to be one, one year and a half, two years from now on, because that will come massively into, uh, into this industry. And, and we need to make the systems possible to be managed into a solution like that. And if you are not driving into a sustainable way, then the overall system is, we're going to hit it's a dead end. That. Exactly, it's a dead end. There's no way to get around that, and yeah. I think that's really important. I love that we're representing a lot of geography here. G, you're from Belgium. Sirban, we've got you from Romania, Romania, which I think is awesome. And I, and I actually want to talk about that, because in one of our goals for the show this week is to separate some of the myth from reality when it comes to AI and HPC, very yeah. relevant to our discussion here. But I'm very curious because you know, renewable energy in the Nordics, you've obviously got a very excited community in Romania. Will AI and HPC computing not only democratize AI or the access to this, but also lift up other global geographies and bring them into of this course. high tech fold? Do you think we're going to see Of course, and, yeah. I, and I, I think yeah, if you're looking into this direction, you can compare it like, I don't know, we, we, we talked just prior to the, to the show. You can compare it to the first automobile, right? When it appeared, there were no safety belts, there were no mm -hmm. uh, differentiation in fuel, uh, there were no signs on the street. 
everybody was driving on the right or the left side. Well, let's not go there, right? <laughs> uh, that's a debate for that's over a beers debate we were talking yeah. about later. But it, it, it's, it's at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Very much. The landscape of providers into artificial intelligence space is daunting. I mean, it, it, enormous, right? Which is exceptional because this means a lot of innovation will come. And yeah. when you are looking to what we are driving, it's exactly into this direction. We are trying to democratize the, uh, the infrastructure and the, the solution we are bringing together. Then we are going to advance, putting more new solutions, and then we are going to innovate. Yesterday we have the HPC community event, which was outstanding. Outstanding. The level of conversation. Uh, we had uh, at North, we had Boeing, we had um, uh, University of Cambridge, uh, um, we have talk uh, as well there, so it, it was, the, and the differences in between what the people are implementing and what they are yeah. talking, mm -hmm. goes into the same direction. The future is bright. We were actually commenting on the, the Dell HPC community event you guys had yesterday again. Yeah, but hot It topic. wasn't just Dell though, you was everybody no. in the ecosystem, and I think Boeing had a great example showing the visibility into quantum. And we Intel, saw and, and NVIDIA, and AMD, and, and, and. It's a whole ecosystem. And yeah. my, favorite, my favorite line that I think encapsulated was the, the guy, from, guy from TAC, he said, AI vindicates the HPC way. Yeah. And I think that's the conversation that we're having here so far as dominating the cube and the always. And I'll ask you guys the same question. What is the impact to AI on the HPC and the needs of the evolving data center? Because with cloud well, operations, you're now seeing not repatriation, net yep. new architectural shifts, new build outs, more GPUs, more needs for alternatives to GPUs, more interconnects. AI yep. hardware is dominating, the hyperscalers involved. This is a whole new ball game. What do you guys see the AI impact for HPC? Well, the, the, the number of use cases are just enormous and we still are discovering more and more. Every day, every meeting, I hear about new use cases. And uh, yeah, being it in finance, being it in automotive, being it in airplane, being it in, in business, whatever, they are all finding new use cases. And we find them within the ecosystem for the improving the solutions where, where actually it's happening, for example, optimizing the data sets because the GPUs are generating, they're using quite some, quite some power, they, they're generating quite some heat, and you can, if you don't do this right, the whole, the whole system, system can melt down if yep. you don't do this right. So AI is used and computational fluid dynamics is used to optimize the data centers, to optimize the whole technology within the solution itself, but outside it's just hilarious. And we see this now in HPC. We are working also with, uh, with uh, developers, companies developing HPC software and so on, and AI software, and the two are merging. They're using yeah. AI within the HPC to improve where calculations are normally taking way too long if you need to calculate yeah. over and over again. I can use another example, I'm meeting the guys later today. It's a weather forecasting company here in the, yeah. in the Colorado area, and they're really applying more and more AI to predict the weather and to, uh, to impact what, what can be done with climate. That, that's the, that democratization yep. piece, you Absolutely. were just referring so, so to that. That is a huge point. Yeah, so, I, I, and again, I don't think that those words are excluding. Those are starting to combine. Which into world? The HPC and the AI, okay. they're they going Absolutely. to combine, and you, you'll see systems right now running an HPC workload, tomorrow being redesigned, reconfigured in order to run an AI workload, a, a, an inferencing yeah. or a training of, of a large thing, and then you're moving again to the something else. And, and this, I, I think that the challenge we are looking right now is to finding the people which are able to, to drive this one. In the past it was easy, you get yeah. the several students and yeah. it was cheap. Now you, you've, you're facing for a lot of resources and you need to find those resources to attract them into the ecosystem and to develop them. First of all, I want to just say you guys are both excited, I can tell by that question. AI is, is hot. Why is AI important? And it's because everyone's excited, the enthusiasm high. <laughs> Is, is, is that, what's going to change in the ecosystem? Because you're teasing it out. Use cases are expanding, developer, new talents coming in, yeah. entrepreneurial energy, you start cool. to see this tier two, yeah. you know, core yeah. weavers of the world building on top of bare so, metal. So what's happening? What's the real driver? You know, and I'm getting back to the use cases. There are absolutely vertical use cases, but there are a lot of horizontal use cases. There are, every company on this earth will have a sales, a marketing, a finance, a, an HR department. What if your HR department will be able to tell you what is the attrition risk of a specific individual? Or if your finance department will tell you what is the most likely 
uh, risk uh, assessment for a, for a loan, or you are doing a road optimization, in, so, uh, or you are doing a better offer, a better uh, sales proposition. Instead of doing one per day, you can do 10 per day. And I think that this will improve the capacity of the companies to be more agile, to be more innovative, and to be able to respond to the customers in a much faster way. And be more innovative as well. Of course. So they drive, they really, the innovation is also uh, exponential in a way, what is possible. So yeah. they discover the combinations of what was possible and what, what, what they knew, really yeah. look at now for the new use cases. That's uh, so exciting to see this, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this ever new uh, <laughs> ideas popping up. Yeah. I mean, it, it is thrilling and, and one of the things that I always remind myself, in the, both in the AI space and in the quantum space, is we're going to be answering questions we don't even know how to ask yet. Which is, yeah. Exactly, but think about this one. One year ago, there were very few people speaking about generative AI. Yeah, oh yeah, no, one I year, At Christmas, I was together with my family and my friends. Everybody below 25 years old knew what it was in the market. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> above that age was like, what? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? about? <laughs> market so, education is wild. And now it's exactly. changed. And everybody, yeah. everything changed into what? One year? Yeah. Yeah. Is it one year it was developed? No, it started in the 40s. Yeah. That's, that's the different story. Oh no, I know. But, 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 but it's amazing yeah. how fast is the adoption, and how fast is the... And, I, and you, I got to say, Dell is on, on the right wave. I talked to multiple execs over Absolutely. your company. It's clear there's an opportunity for Dell to ride this next wave, like you did on all the other generations, PC, web, mobile, and now desktop. You brought up a good point, and data drives this. So now, okay, so you have everyone understanding AI. The role of data is going to be more and more important. So the storage, how packets move from one point to the other. That's is, and then you know what what does it go? How it computes on it? This is classic data center nuts and bolts. Storage, servers, and networking. We're, ba we're back. We're we back. Never, we never left. We're back. <laughs> and probably yeah. here it will come. What what Guy is mentioning about is the data locality because you can't have the compute somewhere and the data somewhere else. Yeah, you need, to, you need yeah. to get them together because else the latency will become too large and you will not be able to, to benefit from the, from the innovation. But this is why we put, proposed, a, proposed a, a dedicated line of servers for this machine, you know? So, you know, if you're looking to the XC9680, which is the eight-way GPU machine, this is a beast. But this is a beast which is what you need to run yeah. in order to be able to, you need to drive to it. Cr crank exactly. out the AI. I mean, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Beast the, mode. The, yeah, there definitely is beast mode. Speaking of beast mode, you just had a very interesting acquisition. Can you tell me about the compute acquisition? Yeah, so I, I started off by saying we look at the workloads and then we see what's coming out. And actually, we have been, of course, building the technology from the ground up, from the data centers, and we're happy to provide the data centers to large companies who know what they're doing and they bring it in themselves, or we provide HPC and AI as a service, also for this, always for this HPC and AI workloads. Now we require compute who actually start from the workloads. They start from the, from the engineering workloads, from the simulation workloads, from the AI workloads, and actually they are pre-installed. The applications, we pre-install them. So actually the users, the scientists, or the engineers, or the simulation engineers, they just say, okay, what do I want to run? I put my data, and they hit, and it's, it's working. It's not like people need to think, oh, how this, this needs to be configured right, and lose a lot of time before they can actually run it, because that's why they do it. They need to run the simulations, need to run the AI inference or, or, or machine learning. And it's then also about getting the data fast enough to the GPUs to keep them busy, not having to wait for the data. So that is what go the compute acquisition brings, is that from the applications downwards. We were already very strong in from the from all the uh, the energy, the data centers, the networks, the, the compute, the storage, and so on upwards. Yeah. So now we have the two that comes together, which it's is helping for the time to market and the the the, uh, the productivity of the users. Yeah, having computer aided engineering pre-installed, it's that it's really that zero to sixty moment that you get to faster and then can start seeing what's going to happen Absolutely. once you're on the road trip and, and get on the journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is why we position, for instance, we have positioned Dell validated design, which are giving the, the blueprint, if you like, of yeah. how to select the infrastructure dedicated for your workload. If it's an inferencing, if it's a training, if it's a pre-training yeah. model, just to have the understanding of how to do this 
it's not just putting things together, it's putting, yeah. it's providing you an infrastructure which works, yeah. it's tested, it's validated, and right. we know it's working. Yeah. I love that. So Bron, you brought up a really great point. Last question to both of you as you're noodling. You mentioned a year ago, we were not talking <laughs> about generative AI. When we have you back on theCUBE next year at Supercomputing, what are we going to be talking about that is maybe just a murmur in the hallway track right now? Wow, I, I, I sense that what we are looking into the next year is that a lot of enterprises will move from a pilot into full development of their AI infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I don't have the, I have the cube, but I don't have the crystal ball. Um, I, like that I, I, I sense as well that we are going to see a lot of developments into the infrastructure. There are new mm -hmm. processor, new GPUs, new connectivity, and we have a lot of um, examples from what can be done differently than the traditional way of doing IT. Love it, great answer. Look forward to playing back that footage next year <laughs> and, and seeing how it tees up. G, what's your prediction? So, I agree, and I would, would like to add, now today, a lot of machine learning is still happening. A lot of models are being created, and yes, we see the test with ChatGPT and, and the large language models, but I think the, the inference, the real usage of the models, I think that's exactly. going to boom. And that's, as you say, the enterprises are all looking into it. Some are more advanced than others, but they will get there. They, they see the point. And it's really, their board, their, their executive teams, they get it, and they really, they, they, they cannot wait to see the results in their organizations. So I think that's going to make a big difference. Absolutely. The uptake of this, the so real usage of this in the whole economy, in the whole ecosystem. In the, Absolutely. Agree. Absolutely agree. Lots more case studies, lots more reason to celebrate. Jeez, reason to come back. Yeah, you, yes, we would love to have you back. Thank you both for an absolutely fantastic thank and informative dialogue about sustainable business and HPC and AI. John, thank you for your candor and your fabulous questions. Thank you. And thank you to our fabulous supercomputing community out there tuning in live to our coverage here from Denver, Colorado. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for emerging tech news.